It's enough. That's enough side quests for now. I actually did all of them, but I'm not showing all of them here. I'm just going to jump forward a little bit, cut out some of the unnecessary fluff, and take my chocobo across the swamp. Finally. Something that really only took a few minutes in the original game takes quite a while here. So, we sure this is safe? Heard pockets of the bog are damn near bottomless. Plus, there's that giant man-eating serpent. Bill assured us the chocobos could handle it. Have some faith in our feathered friends. According to local legends, Titan possesses earth-shattering strength. He is capable of crushing whole mountains with his fist. Perhaps we have him to thank for the rolling hills and verdant plains that comprise Something this region I of the planet. Something previous episodes, but I'm just going to show it here. Are these little, uh, I forget what they're called, but it's, you get a signal from Chadley saying that there is something that, a rock that you need to go and scan. You go and you smash something and it gives you a lead off here. And apparently the summon materia that he can sell you, you have, you have to beat them, of course, to be able to summon the materia, use the summon materia. But there are these little things out here that you can scan that strengthen the materia, strengthen the summon creature. So, if you plan on doing a lot of summoning, you might as well go and scan these things because it makes your summons more powerful. It all also seems to have. Oh, it's just a timing puzzle. You got to see where the button prompts are, and then they disappear as it goes through again, and you just hit them in time for where they were. So you just have to remember. <laughs> Sorry if I still sound like crap. I'm still trying to get over my COVID infection. But anyway, I had already beaten Titan, so this is just making him more powerful. But it seems like it also potentially makes the fight easier to um, unlock Titan. That concludes our analysis of the Grassland Summon Crystals. Thank you. Now Titan will become an even more formidable ally. Congratulations. So I kind of got lost in this area. I went to an area that was on a, just a dead end and I got stuck there thinking that that's where I needed to be. So I'm going to speed up this next part just to get through it more quickly. But I'll, I'll slow it back down once we get to something that's more important. I gotta try to keep these episodes at least reasonable in terms of length. And since I'm playing through this game um, blind as I'm recording it, it I'm not going to know the optimal way or even the way of getting through it until after I've already played it. So, <laughs> kind of uh, kind of makes it difficult for me to have an optimized run through. But anyway, I'm definitely in the wrong section here. I just didn't realize it. Although there are some chocobo things that you can go and unlock and find and all that kind of crap. If, if you really do want to search out the secrets and all that, it's worth it to go into this area. But I was just in the wrong region. Over there. It's Sephiroth. <gasps> what? Come on. I love this thing that they're doing in this game compared to the previous um, remake as well as all of the previous Final Fantasy games, in fact. And, in fact, most RPGs or JRPGs. Because notice that all of the other characters are still with the party. I choose the three characters. I have Cloud, I have Red 13, I have Barrett with me right now. But Tifa and, and Aerith are still with the party, so you still hear their input, you still hear their dialogue and all that kind of stuff. They're just not taking part in the battles. And they sort of like hang back and take pot shots at the enemies, but I don't think they're actually doing any damage. It's just, you know, for um, visual effect, you know. But it was something that, I mean, it added a little bit of replay value to the original game. But you would always have, like, a feeling that you were missing something. 
Like, I'm going through a section of the game and I have Tifa in my party, but I don't have Aerith in my party. I'd be like, well, what was... What was Aerith going to say if, uh, if I'd brought her instead? Well, they want you to play the game again, I guess, to figure that out. But it always feels like you're... You have an incomplete experience. So this game is sort of solved that by always having, or at least when the story permits it, the other characters following you around at a little bit more of a distance. So, you know, like I don't see them in the screen right now, but if I turned around, you'd see Tifa and Aerith following along. And it gives the opportunity to have them be in the cutscenes, to have their little character banter, all that kind of stuff. <coughs> It's just a nice little touch that I... If they didn't do that in Remake, and... Like, it's... Say, um... Then, it, it's something that I'd like to see more. It's it's a really nice little effect. Plus, it always had the question, like, where did everyone else go? <laughs> well, they're here. That's where they're at. Is that dry land, I see? Let's go. Okay, so yeah, everybody's standing right here, but uh, Tifa and, and Aerith are going to take a step back because they're not participating in the battle. I did find this to be a little bit of a cop-out because yeah, in the original game, you could fight, what is they call, what they call this thing, the Midgard Dor Dormer? Yeah, I think it was called the, the Midgard Zolom in the original game. You could fight it if you really want. Chances are it was going to beat your ass because it was made, it was scaled to be too difficult. If you had picked up the beta enemy skill, you could kill it pretty easily. Or if you, like, tried hard enough, you could just, like, brute force your way through it, you know? Do a little bit of level grinding, um, get your summon materials and crap like that, whatever. You could you could kill it if you wanted to, but it wasn't really worth it, and, and it wasn't what you were, the way you were intended to get past it. What you were supposed to do is get the chocobo, the chocobo could run fast enough to avoid it and then you don't have to face it at all you can return later on in the game if you really want to kill the thing but you're supposed to avoid it get back funny thing is I had always found that the easiest way to avoid uh, the snake was not to actually get the chocobo. You could do it if you wanted, but all you had to do is like creep along the side of the shore, and the snake would move in your direction and then bounce off of the shore and pull away. So you get as close to the to cave on the other side as you could, while you still had shoreline to stand on. Wait for the snake to approach. It bounces off the shore and has to move away, and then you just sort of make a run. For the cave, and you could always do it. So if you didn't really need the chocobo, if you didn't want it. But in this game, despite the fact that you got the chocobo, and you're supposed to, in the original game, you'd be able to avoid this fight entirely. It makes us fight it anyway, and I guess maybe that's because, I mean, there are a lot of changes to the narrative and all that kind of stuff. But they. Maybe they didn't want to waste a boss fight because they were going to put a lot of effort into this thing and just have it beat your ass for a, an impossible fight or what's supposed to be an impossible fight. And everyone's just going to try to avoid it. You'd have to avoid it if you wanted to get through. It felt like, I guess, a waste. So I was like, ah, well, just stick it in there. You know, it's a memorable thing. People remember it from the original game, so you're going to have to stick it in here. But, you know, it'll be fine. Just have everybody fight it anyway. I'm just going to speed up the rest of this. 
Something else it's doing that was similar-ish to what it did in the original game was it is removing party members from the fight. Now, in the original game, it would just sort of uh, crouch down a little bit and, like, sniff out somebody. who was it, Whoever it was picking, I guess it was done at random. Pick at whoever it wanted to move from the fight. And it just sort of smack them up with, with its tail. I guess it's all tail. It's a snake, isn't it? And that person would just be ejected from the battle. Now, this actually had something of a benefit to you, even though it would make the fight more difficult because you would lose a character. It also meant that if you lost the battle, you would, um, if you actually lost and were defeated in the fight, you would still have a character that wasn't unconscious. So the game wouldn't, you wouldn't be have a game over. In this game, it doesn't eject your character from the battle, because, I mean, look at the battlefield. It, it, the game doesn't really support that kind of thing. It just sort of swallows one of you. And if eventually it'll just sort of throw you back up, and you can, like, it swallowed Cloud. And now, it swallowed him twice, I think. <laughs> he swallowed now. Oh, he's back in. Thank <laughs> you. 